Homie, what is going on? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being here. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're having a great week so far. In today's video, I want to talk to you about the nine foods that you should be avoiding as a football. Before we get into the video and before I get completely roasted here on YouTube and in the comments, which I really don't care about, I want to let you know that there are no foods that you really should completely cut out of your diet. I strongly believe that you can include every single food in your diet in moderation as part of a well-balanced diet like we always talk about. Though after coaching hundreds of footballers online, I have seen in multiple cases many foods that are being overeaten. So instead, I would like you to eat those foods in moderation, and I wanna give you some examples of what to eat instead of these foods. Throughout the video, you're gonna notice that there's a pattern. As I always talk about, the main goal as a footballer is you need to eat aligned with your goals and with your ambitions. Depending on how strict you are, you can either go 80-20, or 90-10. This is a simple nutrition rule that I like to use myself, all my one-on-one -on -one online clients use it, and everyone I speak to in person that I try to help with their nutrition. It's the 80-20 or the 90-10 rule. So basically what it is, is 80% of the time eat aligned with your goals, 20% of the time eat what you love, and if you wanna be more strict and you wanna hit your goals quicker, you can go 90-10. So 90% of the time eat aligned with your goals, 10% of the time, eat what you love. As we both know, food is very special. It's a great way to break bread, enjoy time with people, smile, laugh, try new things. So I don't think any food should be completely cut out. I don't like to label foods as good or bad. I like to characterize foods as align with your goals or not align with your goals. And you can eat both as part of a well-balanced diet, depending on how strict you wanna be, like I said. So let's get into the video, let's get into the nine foods. So number one that I see constantly being overeaten by footballers is deli meats. I completely understand this. I did this personally when I was younger and I didn't have the knowledge. Turkey breast, ham, bologna, salami, all those cold cuts taste unbelievable. Don't get me wrong, I love a nice hero. It's one of the best things that you can eat, a nice hero. Nice deli meat, nice cheese, a little bit of lettuce, a little bit of tomato, a little bit of spicy mustard, a little bit of crisp bread, nothing better. But I see a lot of people overeating this stuff. And yeah, some of it has a lot of good quality protein, but the downside I would say is the sodium is super, super hot. And as an athlete, you really don't need to worry about your sodium, but this really takes it to another limit. But in terms of the sodium, that's not the most concerning thing. Within the meat, they have something called nitrates and nitrites. When that's combined with the processing of the meat, it can be cancer causing. And this meat is very, very highly processed. But instead of eating deli meats, I would rather you cook fresh meat instead. Chicken, beef, fish. If you don't eat deli meats at all, you're more of a vegetarian, go for tofu or tempeh, even go for eggs, really excellent source, convenient source of protein. But I get it, I get it, you reach for deli meats because they're convenient, they're easy to eat, they're easy to prepare. But like I've talked about many times before with you on Instagram, on TikTok, here on YouTube, I talk about it all the time, my one-on-one -on -one online clients. Meal prepping is one of the most important things that you can do as a footballer to prepare yourself for the week and help your overall nutrition. When you meal prep and you pick I always recommend picking two days of the week. I always like to go Wednesday and Sunday because you can store meats for about three to five days on the safer side, three days, but you pick two days during the week and you cook all your stuff for the next couple of days and you have it in the fridge. This way, everything is convenient, everything's ready to eat, everything's ready to go. So you want when you wanna grab a quick snack or make a quick meal or you don't feel like cooking after a tough training, you can grab this meat, you can grab this protein, and you can add it to vegetables, you can add it to carbohydrates, depending on your goal, depending on your training for the day, like I've talked about before. But yeah, simple, instead of deli meats, start cooking fresh meats, fresh protein, meal prep, that's the way to do it. Obviously, once in a while, it's absolutely fine to have a turkey sandwich, ham sandwich, bologna sandwich, salami sandwich. I do it, not so often, maybe three, four times a year, Maybe I'll do it more often when I head home, back home to the US for a bit. But the second food that you should be avoiding and eating in moderation is breakfast cereal. I honestly have cut this completely out of my life. Maybe sometimes on a cheat day, I'll go for Reese's Puffs, I'll go for Lucky Charms, I'll go for Cinnamon Toast Crunch, that stuff's absolutely unbelievable. I'll maybe have it 
once, twice a year. It tastes unbelievable, but there's a reason behind it. Breakfast cereal, at least most breakfast cereal that isn't health conscious, is ridden with tons of sugar, tons of additives, tons of emulsifiers, tons of thickeners that are not good for you. They're terrible for your body and they definitely make you feel bad. I'm sure you've noticed after you've eaten breakfast cereal, it tastes unbelievable going down, but afterwards you feel quite crap. And if you don't know, there are scientists that are hired by these big food companies to make these foods highly palatable. Basically what that means is when you eat the food, even though you may be full or not even hungry, you want more of it because it's scientifically made, scientifically man-made for you to keep wanting more because they want you to eat more of their product. It's, it's smart, I mean, it's smart marketing. We fall for it as consumers, but it's something to be aware of. If you ever notice that sometimes you eat a bag of potato chips, you sit down on the couch and you only want a few chips, you end up eating the whole bag, that's part of this science. They do an excellent job of really hitting the right taste buds, really getting your brain and your body going for continuing to want more of this. So instead of breakfast cereal, please start eating 100% real oatmeal. Yeah, it may take a little bit more time to prepare, maybe 10 minutes as opposed to two minutes, but it's much, much better for you and you will feel so much better after you eat it. Plus, you can add some nice fresh berries, you can add some nice raw honey, you can add nuts to that, and it's an unbelievable breakfast. One that I always eat, one of my favorite breakfasts, one of my favorite breakfasts that I recommend to one-on-one -on -one online clients. It's really a great thing to eat, and it's a great replacement because it's got fiber, tons of antioxidants, tons of nutrients that will make you feel good and keep you full and fueled for your training session, which is the goal. So, second food, Really try to eat breakfast cereal in moderation and switch to 100% real oatmeal instead. Oh, the third food that I want to talk about for you to avoid and definitely eat less of is flavored yogurt. Flavored yogurt, just like breakfast cereal, maybe even more, has a ton of added sugar, has a ton of added crap inside. They put tons of sugar, they want you to enjoy it, I completely understand. They don't put real fruit inside, even though they may tell you they do so. But there's a lot of added ingredients, a lot of added thickeners, emulsifiers, sweeteners that we don't want to be putting in our body as footballers. We want to fuel ourselves so we can perform well at training and we can adapt to the stress that we put ourselves in when we train. That's the goal. We want to adapt. We want to reduce inflammation so we can adapt and become better footballers and better athletes. That's why we train. That's why we do the extra stuff. That's why we go to team training because we want to perform well on the weekend. When we take control of our nutrition, we will perform well on the weekend, I promise you. So instead of the flavored yogurt, let's do Greek yogurt, Bulgarian yogurt, Turkish yogurt. I know a lot of you guys and girls get on my case when I only mention Greek, so Bulgarian, Turkish, well, whatever else they got, that plain yogurt, full fat, and then same thing with the oatmeal. Add your own fruit, add your own raw honey, Add your own berries, add your own nuts, add your own whatever you want to add to it. Make it a little nicer with that stuff and I'm telling you it will make you feel so much better. It's an excellent snack that you can eat, even a breakfast, a nighttime snack depending on your goal. Greek yogurt, plain yogurt is one of the staples in my diet and for all my one-on-one -on -one clients. So third food, instead of buying those flavored yogurts, Buy regular yogurt and add your own toppings. You'll save a lot of money and you will feel much better. So the fourth food that I wanna talk about for you to avoid and definitely eat less of and in moderation is salad dressing. Salad dressing is also filled with tons of preservatives, tons of thickeners, emulsifiers, artificial sweeteners that we don't wanna be putting in our body. So instead of buying store-bought Salad dressings, make your own. It's much healthier and it's much cheaper. I do it all the time. Use 100% extra virgin olive oil or with a squirt of lemon or lime. You can do balsamic or red wine vinegar and then you could add some fresh sea salt and some fresh ground pepper. When using the extra virgin olive oil, please beware of your serving size, of your portion size, because it can be very high in calories. Generally what I do is I take a teaspoon, measure it out, and then drizzle it on the salad. But extra virgin olive oil is something that you definitely shouldn't avoid. You should definitely have in your diet. One of the best things for your heart, 
for your brain and your overall body and it helps you really digest and absorb the nutrients from the salad and the vegetables that you eat because a lot of the vegetables they have vitamins inside that are fat soluble so they need to be combined with a good quality fat for your body to absorb it so instead of these store-bought dressings make your own it's better for your body and it's better for your wallet so we are on to food number five packaged whole wheat bread packaged whole wheat bread may sound sexy may sound healthy to athletes it did to me when I was younger, trust me, until I really started looking into the ingredients and studying nutrition. So that's why I'm here to tell you to be mindful about it. Instead of packaged whole wheat bread, spend the little extra time, the little extra money to go to a local bakery and buy sourdough, buy rye bread, any of the fresh brown breads that they have, pumpernickel, all of those breads are really, really good for you if you can tolerate gluten. Even sometimes sourdough and rye, if you're gluten sensitive, really is okay for the stomach if it's freshly baked, but that's up to you. Also, you can become friends with the baker, and believe it or not, if you become better friends with the baker and you really feel their good vibes, their good emotions, and they put their good energy into that food, believe it or not, you will get that energy back. It may sound woo-woo, it may sound hippie, but it's a study science. Let's stop going for those packaged whole wheat breads. Those packaged whole wheat breads have a ton of additives, have a ton of extra things added to it. Artificial uh, sweeteners, sugars, extra stuff to make sure that it stays on the shelf for longer and so it doesn't mold. So it has preservatives. We don't want to be putting that in our body. So instead of packaged whole wheat bread, go for fresh bakery baked Bread. Trust me, it will taste much, much better and you'll feel much better afterwards and it'll be a good additive to your avocado toast. So the sixth food that I want to talk about for you to definitely eat less of, definitely eat in moderation, is flavored oatmeal. You may be saying to me, hey Ricky buddy, you told me to eat oatmeal instead of cereal. And yeah, that's very true, but I told you, if you listened, 100% real oats in a nice, container that they use, whatever, Quaker, whatever you like, get real oats without any additives or sweeteners. There's a lot of flavored oatmeal out there that, trust me, tastes unbelievable. The maple brown sugar, the peaches and cream, the blueberries and cream. All that stuff tastes really good. It's very convenient. They put it in a nice slip pack. You can open it up, boom, hot water, boom, it's done. Take an extra five to 10 minutes, make your own oatmeal in a nice pan, in a nice skillet, however you want to make it. You can even make it with a hot water maker. It's very simple. I can put a recipe down below in the description. I can make it for you fresh here on YouTube. Let me know and I will do that. A lot of people have been asking for my oatmeal recipe on Instagram, so I can do that. Instead of that flavored oatmeal, instead of that crap, go for 100% real oats. Take your time to make your own oats. It'll taste so much better. You'll feel so much better afterwards. You can add your own 100% real maple syrup, raw honey, berries, nuts, whatever you like to it that's more natural and definitely much better for you. So the seventh food that I wanna talk about for you to avoid and definitely eat in moderation is prepared salads. You may be saying to yourself, but Ricky, you always tell me to eat vegetables, man. You tell me to eat five, seven veggies. I wanna eat this prepared salad. But you don't realize most prepared salads in supermarkets, in cafes, if you pick that up and you read the ingredients, most of the ingredients you can't read and there are tons of ingredients. And I always say to myself, shouldn't a salad just be vegetables, lean meat, cheeses, whatever it is, why are all these ingredients included? And trust me, I don't know why myself, but instead of those packaged salads, order something else at the cafe, maybe order a fresh salad if you can, put your own toppings in there, put your own vegetables in there, watch them make it instead of that packaged crap, or go home and make your own fresh salad. Very, very simple, fresh raw veggies, maybe some cheeses if you can tolerate lactose, some high quality protein like we talked about before, chicken, fish, beef, whatever you like, whatever you prefer, maybe some beans. As long as you're not playing on the pitch very soon, you don't wanna be on the bowl, you wanna be on the pitch, we don't wanna be like Eric Dyer. But yeah, instead of those packaged salads, please go for fresh salads that you make yourself or you tell the cafe attendant to make for you. And one thing that I wanna to add to that, when on a diet, many people, they go out and they eat salads 
and they don't realize the dressing and all that crap that they put in the croutons, the extra stuff to make you enjoy the salad if you really don't enjoy fresh veggies, more calories and can be more calories than a burger and fries or a pizza. So just beware, be mindful, that's the goal. So the eighth food that I wanna talk about or drink that I wanna talk about is fruit juice. Yes, fruit juice once in a while is absolutely okay for you. All this stuff is okay for you once in a while in moderation, but most store-bought fruit juices are very, very high in sugar because they use tons of fruit. A lot of it isn't always 100% real fruit, so they can add sugar, they can add additives, they can add sweeteners, depending on where you buy your fruit juice. So I would really recommend if you like fruit juice, go once in a while to a fresh juice store and have them juice the fruits in front of you so you see what you're consuming. So you're not consuming a ton of sugar and a ton of crap and you just eat the real fruit. What I would recommend instead of fruit juice is eating the real fruit. What you don't realize is when they juice fruits, they usually will juice about three to five oranges, three to five apples, whatever it is, whatever you're drinking, and if you and me both sat down, you wouldn't eat three or five apples, three or five oranges in one serving. So they're putting all that in an eight ounce glass. And even though it's natural sugar, that hits your bloodstream really quick, spikes your insulin. Yeah, it's not a big deal since you're an athlete, but it could make you crash, could lead to other problems down the road. So once in a while, fruit juice is fine, trust me. But if you're drinking fruit juice, please try to get that freshly squeezed juice that stuff's decent for you once in a while, but most importantly, most of the time, try to have the real fruit because they don't put the fiber in there. They don't put the whole fruit. They don't put the, the skin of the fruit. So you're really missing a lot of the fiber when you drink fruit juice. So most of the time, try to eat real fruit instead of drinking the juice. And the last food that I wanna talk about today, number nine, is vegetable chips. Yes, you may say, oh, it says vegetable in front of the word chips, so they must be healthy. And yeah, maybe they're a bit healthier. And like I said, you can eat them once in a while. I do once in a while, maybe once a month, maybe twice a month. They taste good. But I'm not gonna take the whole bag with me to the couch and watch a movie or watch a TV show. Instead, I portion it out, take a handful, put it in a bowl, and I sit on the couch. Because like I spoke to you about before with the breakfast cereal, in most packaged foods, there are food scientists designing these foods to be addictive. And trust me, vegetable chips are absolutely unreal. They're definitely addictive, but they have a ton of oils. They have, they can add sugar to that. They can add extra crap to that. So instead, go for fresh raw vegetables and you can eat it with stuff like hummus, your own made Greek yogurt dip. Any healthy dips that you make yourself, you can eat those fresh vegetables with and that's a much better snack, will make you fuller, and you'll get all the micronutrients, the vitamins, and the minerals from those vegetables because they're 100% fresh. And that's the last food of the day. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. As you've seen throughout the video, the familiarity with all the nine foods, the common theme here, like I always talk about, our goal is to always eat fresh foods, whole foods that are nutrient dense most of the time. Like I said in the beginning of the video, 80, 20, 90, 10. You could eat this stuff 20% of the time, 10% of the time, but most of the time, eat the foods that I've told you to replace it with. You don't have to completely cut the foods out of your diet, but you will notice how much better you feel when you make a slight replacement. And it's really not a lot of effort. You will save money with this process. It will take a bit more time, but the thing that's funny is if you take a little bit more time to cook, instead of buying packaged foods and eating convenient foods all the time, it may take a bit more time, but you'll get back more energy, which you can use to perform better, you can use to help others, you can use to better your relationships, and that's the goal. So take a little bit extra time, do some cooking, do some preparing, and do your best to eat fresh, whole foods, and then once in a while, you can eat this packaged stuff. It's absolutely fine, trust me. I'm not cutting out a turkey, Swiss, mustard, lettuce, and tomato sandwich on freshly baked rye, maybe toasted. That stuff's unbelievable. I actually might have to try that sometime soon. Sounds really good, makes my mouth water. But thank you so much for watching this. I appreciate your support. Hope you're enjoying these videos. I'm really trying to put out more YouTube videos, 
more podcasts, more longer form stuff so you can get to know me better. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day. Please like the video. Please subscribe. Tell your friends and family about the channel. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Keep grinding. Keep working hard. Keep getting those three points on the weekend. Deuces.